In the next episode of Nintendo Power Time Machine, we're going to be talking about issue number six, featuring Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. On this episode, we're gonna go back to May of 1989. We're gonna talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, find out who won the 1988 Nintendo Power Awards, and we're also gonna make Mike Tyson's punch. It's all here in issue six. Let's go. Flipping through an issue of Nintendo Power is like traveling through time. Nintendo's fascinating, nostalgic, and sometimes hilarious past is captured forever on its pages. Journey with me through time to discover Nintendo's history. When this issue arrived, new kids on the block were making dudes cringe everywhere. The theaters were brimming with classics like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Ghostbusters 2, and of course, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The cover is perfect. Probably the best one up to this point, and unlike the game's box art, the turtles are wearing the correct colored bandanas. Cowabunga, dude. Cowabunga. In the mailbox section, there's a recipe for Mike Tyson's punch. Two cups strawberry Kool-Aid, two cups raspberry Kool-Aid, two cups ginger ale, one box frozen strawberries. Hmm. Mix both flavors of Kool-Aid and the ginger ale. Add the strawberries. Chill for at least 30 minutes before serving. Okay. There it is, Mike Tyson's punch. You know, I don't drink a whole lot of sugar, so I'm not exactly sure how this is going to affect me. It's a very delicious drink, you know. This is also the issue where Andrew Martin sent in the infamous Zelda rap. It's Legend of Zelda and it's really bad. The creatures in the game are really rad. I mean, it's totally death, but I can't do it. <laughs> issue 6 features Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This first spread really triggers that nostalgic gut reaction. The second spread triggers a different reaction in my gut. Now I really loved the cartoon and the toys. I remember Kid Me was very disappointed with these poser enemies. What are these things? Where are the foot soldiers? I don't remember these guys. Oh no, here comes Fire Freak and Robo. But I guess you have to beat him if you're ever gonna return Sprinter to human form. Sprinter? Sprinter to human form. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 could have and should have been so much more. These screenshots and level layouts remind me how clunky and awkward it is at times. This issue also gave us coverage of the adventures of Crocodile Dundee. The adventures of Bayou Billy. I mean Bayou Billy. This game screamed variety with side-scrolling beat-em-up, light gun, and driving levels. Unfortunately, I only really remember the first level because this game is so brutal. It's a good thing there's so many power-ups to help Billy beat... Gordon. Beat Gordon? Like the knife. It can reach the enemies your long arm can't. Long arm? That's not a knife. That's actually really offensive. Once again, the poster is gold. I mean, Mega Man 2. Bask with me for a minute. One thing I never really noticed before is that there's actually a poster within the poster. One thing I wish I never noticed is this. The preview section gives us glimpses of classics like Mega Man 2 with its amazing cast of robot baddies and clever bosses. The fantasy adventure Faxanadu with its awkward, creepy villagers, and of course, Clash at Demon Head. Listen to this convoluted story. In 1990X, the world ran into trouble when a bunch of no-goods called the Lawbreakers kidnapped a scientist capable of building a bomb big enough to make nobody a winner. Someone's got to try to stop them, but are the Tigers really ready? Bang is their best agent, and if you can pull him off the beach, you just may be able to find your way through these twisting madhouse pathways in quest of the secrets at Demon Head. I can't make this up. I mean, it's barely comprehensible. Ah, Counselor's Corner. I love the helps we get from friendly gameplay counselors. Like this stage select for Akari Warriors. 
Press the following buttons on the controller. Up, down, A, A, B, left, right, A, B, up, A, down, right, right, left, B, up, left, A, right, B, left, right, A, left, up, A, down, A, right, left, B, and start. For crying out loud, that's impossible! Actually, notice his question isn't, how do I enter the stage select, it's, how can I get the stage select to work? It's like the kid already knows the code, he just can't get it to work. I mean, it'd be easier just to play the game. This issue's top 30 is pretty solid. Most of the top 10 are classic gold, but Rampage? I mean, it's fun, but I'm not sure how it beat out Castlevania, Punch-Out, or Mega Man. Maybe in 30 years they'll make it a live-action theatrical movie. Nah. Video Shorts gives us a glimpse of Super Dodgeball and Baseball Stars, but the rest of the section is riddled with bad and moderately disturbing artwork. What? The, I mean, come on. The celebrity profile continues to use famous people to try to convince kids that are already obsessed with video games that it's Hollywood cool. You know what really makes me want to play video games? Imagining Holly Robinson play her favorite game, Gumshoe. Gumshoe is my all-time favorite game, says Holly enthusiastically. Really? Gumshoe? Page 91 has a list of 112 NES games, and you know what? Gumshoe isn't even there. The video spotlight letters manage to use all the synonyms for finishing a game. I, like this kid Brian Michaels, would say I beat a game, right? Was I in a bubble? Because Jeremy Albert solved games, Brian Decker conquered games, and the NES Defeating Force Club defeats them. All this reminds me of a time before Wi-Fi and gamer tags and patches and DLC, when gaming was just about playing with your friends and trading game packs at school. Nothing like solving a Nintendo tape and drinking a squeeze-it. Last issue gave us the nominees for the Nintendo Power Awards. Let's see how I did. Best graphics and sound. I'm gonna have to go with... Blaster Master Metroid. Metroid. And the winner is... Castlevania 2? Okay. Best theme, fun. Super Mario Bros. 2. And the winner is... Super Mario Bros. 2. Nailed it. Best overall, I choose... The Legend of Zelda. And the winner is... Zelda 2. Well, one out of three ain't bad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's fine. The next issue features Nintendo's 100 year anniversary, Faxanadu, and Mega Man 2. See you next time.